Hello and welcome to the Heart Wisdom Podcast with Ralph McIntyre, where we discuss the wisdom that comes through the open and connected heart. Well, at the recording of this podcast, we just passed the winter solstice. And I thought it a good time to talk about the cyclical nature of life. The in-breath and the out-breath. The tide comes in and the tide comes out. It's an interesting phenomena. And depending on who you talk to, a lot of people strive to kind of hang out in the center of it all not riding the highs and not riding the lows. And not to say there's not some wisdom in that theory. There's a, probably a lot of wisdom in that theory. But I want to talk about some of the wisdom that lays outside that theory. How often do you hang out at the middle of the breath? Do you take shallow breaths or do you inhale fully and exhale fully. The tide doesn't really hang out in the center. It either comes out or comes in. Goes out, comes in. And so, what I want to kind of talk about is what happens to our brain when the tide's out, when the breath's out, when the cycle's low, when the dark's happening, when it's not the fun time. And also what happens to our braid when the tide's in on that in breath, when it, it lights out and it is the fun time. Because it's not the tide going out or the tide coming in. It's not the breath going in or the breath going out. It's not the fun times or the not fun times. It's the stories, what our brain says with it all. Do we get all high on the high times and get all full of ourselves and think this is great and then comes the crash? Or do we get all low in the low times and just can't seem to get out of the ditch because it's a snowball effect? This is kind of where I struggle with. I know people struggle with different parts of the cycle, but I notice sometimes for myself that when I start to constrict, it just kind of snowballs down and down and down. And depending on who you talk to, they're like, oh, let's try to stay calm. Let's stay in the center. Regulate your emotions. It's not good to go high and it's not good to go low. And that sure makes you feel even worse when you're down at the low lows or possibly when you're at the high highs. There's nothing worse than feeling like this terrible time is doing it wrong to get you even lower. But what I want to talk about is the, the gold, the power, the wisdom. You know, I think about artists and all the profound art and all the profound things that happened from these completely imbalanced people. That old cliche, the tortured artist. And this is kind of where I want to talk about, you know, because we're in the dark time. We're in the kind of time to be depressed, time to be kind of sulky, kind of like, where's the sun? It's cold. Just got done with Christmas in the United States, around the world. We're still way in on the Corona Rona. A lot of people aren't working. Even those that are working aren't making as much money. So we're in this low tide. The tide seems pretty far out. And unlike the ocean where there's a clear schedule, who knows when the tide's coming in. But there's a lot of cliches around here. And one of the reasons why there's a lot of cliches is there's a lot of power. You know, you hit rock bottom and there's only one way to go. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, so when you're depressed, when you're in that low, low, when you don't see any way out, 
Sometimes it can keep you down, and other times it can motivate you to do something. And it's not that I don't want to talk about that, because I kind of do want to talk a little bit about that, but that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the power in that low, low. That unbelievable art, that magnificent creation that comes out of the torture that the artist puts himself through. And this is where control of your mind is so important. This is where getting into your heart is so important. This is where not getting lost in the clouds is so important. And it's also about the persistence of the uncomfortableness. Hanging out in the persistence of the uncomfortableness. It's interesting for me, I used to struggle a lot with this, where I would just be in these low, 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 low places. And then I discovered the poetry that I have access to in that place. It's like when I try to put it to words, when I try to put those feelings to words, when I don't get too caught up in believing my own thoughts. Funny enough, some of these podcasts come out of that. The strife of that low, low, the heartbreak, the heartache, the confusion. And lo and behold, if you can hang out there, if you can persist, if you can keep your mind open, there's a lot of wisdom to be had there. And I'm not even going to insult you or pretend that it's fun. Because it's not. And yet it is. It's interesting for me because quite often now I'll get into these dark places and I'll start writing and be profound at just at what comes out of it. And it's like, oh, okay. So not everyone has access to writing. Not everyone has access to a clear product of that suffering, the misery. But it's not to say it's not there. There's not to say that there's not a lot of wisdom there. The real trick is keeping your mind from running havoc, keeping your mind from making it worse. And that is where everyone has access. Breathing can be a really good thing. If you can, forcing yourself to exercise can be a really good thing. Trying to convince yourself and I say trying, because I know how difficult it is, how trying it can be to see that it will end, that the tide will come back in. That's one of the things I've struggled with the most, is getting locked into that downward spiral and just watching it down and down and down. And the further I go down, the further my mind works on me to go even further down. But so far, I suspect everyone's come back up, maybe a little, maybe a lot, or maybe slow down a little. And I suspect also that there was some insight gained there. So the real trick and really what I'm wanting to talk about in this podcast is the practice of staying with the feelings, those uncomfortable feelings, keeping the stories from taking them over, breathing into the rawness of the feeling. If you lose the story and breathe into the rawness of the feeling, 
Generally speaking, that's where you're going to find the wisdom. The story will kind of dilute it, it'll drown it out. That voice of despair, that spiraling disparity that wants to drag you down to the bottom. If you try not to follow that, if you try to just breathe into the underlying feeling, the triggering feeling, and let it just be it without all the stories you put on it. Because most generally, especially for myself, this is so, so true for myself. It's not the feelings that get me going. It's all the stories that I put on the feelings. The feelings are not comfortable. They're no fun. They're not necessarily enjoyable. But the stories I put on the feelings are absolutely miserable. It's kind of like stubbing your toe and then taking pliers and ripping all your toenails out. It's like, oh, I won't ever stub my toe again. Oh my God. I just stubbed my toe and now my foot really hurts. And that's with those stories. And that's the trick, even in the upward moments, in the middle moments, the more you can practice mindfulness, the more you can not let your mind run crazy when you're in the up, in the middle, or the lower part, or the outward part of the cycle. It's just kind of like the breath. You breathe in, and you breathe out. Interestingly enough, the corona rona attacking the respiratory. I can't breathe. That's where the stories really go crazy. I'm kind of a fascination in river kayaking and big sa big wave surfing. I was big into river kayaking. And there's nothing worse than trying to hold your breath when you're freaking out. Absolutely nothing worse than that. When you're thinking you're going to drown, you use up every drop of precious oxygen in that freak out, leaving nothing for the rest of your body. And the funny part about it is, is that freak out does nothing but make matters worse. Just like holding your breath underwater, just like having a hard time breathing because of a cold freaking out the stories what your mind does with it is not your friend it tries to make enemies out of everything yeah it's uncomfortable but it doesn't have to be completely miserable you can just let it be uncomfortable don't put the whipped cream the frosting of miserableness the stories on top of it that's optional and let me know or let me say I sure struggle with that one it's easy for me to talk about that it's not always so easy for me to believe it to live it especially when I start spiraling down and I suspect a lot of people are struggling with the winter and the cold and the Corona Rona and the isolation and the financial situation and the doom and the gloom of the political stuff. Let's just take a collective breath. This is where faith, the divine, kind of a big Jesus freak these days. Faith in something, keeping your eyes on some unmovable object. The sun, we know now that the sun will come back. The sun will come out. The warm weather will come back. And the trick is to keep that faith as the grounding and not run away from the feelings because to me it's like I find that if I let them spiral out of control with stories 
or if I run away from them, maybe with alcohol or whatever, the internet, the TV, incessive whatever, neither one of those help. Kind of what I'm talking about is just sitting in that uncomfortable feeling without all the stories and looking for the wisdom. Finding the wisdom in that uncomfortable feeling. The art that comes out of the torture. Because I firmly believe that everyone has that available. And I'm using art in the widest, broadest sense of the definition. It may be words. It may be feelings. It may be an understanding. It could be a song. It could be a new project. It could very, very often get you clear on what you really want. What's really important to you. Because so often that's the case for me. Is when I sit in that miserableness. When I sit in that uncomfortableness. When I don't run from it. I don't hide from it. I don't try to dilute it. I don't try to pollute it with the stories. I just sit there. It's usually cloaking some clarity. So in this time of darkness, don't be afraid. Don't run from it. Breathe and sit and find the direction. Find the seed that you want to plant when the sun comes back, when your energy comes back, when the world comes back. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I so appreciate it. I hope you have a spectacular evening.